Hello, and welcome to another episode of For the Love of Animals. We're so glad you joined us today. I'm Darlene Pigford. And I'm Greg Bauer. We'd like to tell our viewers about some upcoming shows, one with uh, local artists from the Paducah area here with their pets and also how they use their pets in the work that they do, the wow. artwork. And also one with uh, uh, the uh, many local quilters feature animals so as we'll they do their quilts. So we'll have animal quilts. Mm -hmm, exactly. Wow, and, and that'll be ru running hopefully during the quilt show. Right. right. And so that'll uh, be a couple of things that I think people will enjoy. So, But what do we have on tap today, Darlene? Well, we have a topic that's near and dear to, uh, to our hearts, Greg, because not only are we dog lovers, we're cat lovers. We're going to be talking about stray and feral cats today. Okay. And, and introduce our guest, Greg. I'll be happy to. We have with us today Gina Dunning who is a, an attorney here in Paducah, who lives in Metropolis. She practices in both states. And one of her avocations is working with feral cats. And we're gonna get a lot of good information, I think, from Gina today on what, what we can do as, uh, uh, as consumers, if you will, to help <laughs> that uh, particular cat population. So Gina, so glad that you're with us today. Thanks oh, for coming. Glad to be here. <laughs> Gina, let's start off. Tell us first about your fur family. Uh, my own personal pets. Your, huh? your own personal uh, pets. Mm -hmm. Well, we've collected them since <laughs> 1988. Is my oldest cat now. He was I got him in 1988, and he was a feral cat, uh, a kitten. Oh. And since then, we've taken in strays, and all of our animals are strays. We now have four dogs, and seven cats at our home. Uh huh. And then we take care of this uh, stray feral colony a few blocks away. Okay. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we'll be doing during the show today will be to talk about the distinctions between a stray or homeless cat and a feral cat. Well, I think that's just a good place to start. Okay. So why don't you help us understand the difference between a feral cat and a stray cat? Okay. Now, my understanding, and this is my <laughs> definition, and I I'll think this it. is pretty well the standard definition, a stray cat is one that has been socialized. It's one that somebody has abandoned or left behind and it's going to be friendly to people. You know, they may be shy at first, but they know how to act around people. They're not afraid, okay? Mm -hmm. And then there's feral cats, and they're cats that may be second generation of a stray who is not socialized. If a stray has been abandoned and is surviving on its own without a family, a human family, they may have kittens, okay? And the kittens, if, if, you're, if the kitten is not around humans uh, right away in the first few weeks of life or first couple months, they're going to be wild semi-wild. They're domestic animals that are wild. Okay. And they learned how to survive in the wild, so the natural instincts are going to take over. Well, mm -hmm. as far as fear goes. Fear right, of humans, as far as fear. Yes. Right. Now really these, a, 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 a cat is domestic, and they're really not going to survive in the wild on their own. Very few actually survive in the wild. Now they may survive in <laughs> urban areas, living off trash, Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Dumpsters. other yes, other animals feeds that people leave out for their animals and things like that. But but a, a cat is not truly wild that you can take them out to the middle of a, a woods and leave them. Very few, if any, would ever survive on their own. They're mm -hmm. domestic animals. Okay, well then, perhaps the one way that we could make the distinction between the two is that really you have to observe the cat's behavior for a period of time before you make a decision as to whether they're feral or whether they are uh, socialized or whatever. But uh, either way, something needs to be done for them. Yes, absolutely. Do you have, can you give us any idea nationally and then locally what the extent of the problem might be? Oh, I think it's overwhelming, and I don't think <laughs> there's any way to know. I mean, how would you ever count, even in exactly. our small town of like Metropolis? Uh -huh. Because they're so hard to find, and it, I mean, they're everywhere, okay? Mm -hmm. but, it, but it's tremendous, okay? It's a tremendous problem. How we, how, how we document the problem, or how others document the problem, is usually at institutions. Okay. You know, there's colleges, okay? They document the number of feral cats in, in, in a place where they congregate. Uh, but in towns with residences, they go from neighborhood to neighborhood trying to find feed, and there's so many. Uh, but the problem, of course, is overpopulation. There's too mm -hmm. many cats and not enough people to care for them. Yeah. Which gets back to this whole problem of overpopulation of our animals. It is. And uh, it's just something that uh, we've got to do something for it. Right, and there's only one answer, and that's the spay and neuter. Yes. That's the only way to solve the problem. Now we can take these other steps that we're going to talk about, which mm -hmm. kind of makes a dent and, and helps some of these animals, but it, it is not the, the, the problem, or it's not the way to solve the problem. The only mm -hmm. solution is to spay and neuter. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and h help me understand, how does that help the problem in the long run? What is, 
the numbers eventually go down or they go down completely? As or far what? as spaying and neutering, if, 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 if we could get at least the majority of people to spay and neuter the pets, the people that don't. Domestic pets. Yes, they're domestic pets. Okay. Because if, you, if your cat has six kittens, five kittens, and you don't want them and you're not planning on taking care of them, uh, you think you're going to give them away. Well, that's everybody's thought. Uh -huh. There's enough, how many animals are put down, euthanized every year because oh, there's not enough in the people millions. to yes. care for them. So if you were to spay and neuter, it's going to reduce the population. And any reduction in the population is, is going to be helpful. Now, I, we would never solve the problem totally. There's always going to be irresponsible people. There's always going to be accidents. There's always, well, I don't think we have to worry about there not being kittens in the world right. to adopt or puppies right. to adopt. Uh, it's just that right now it, it's excessive the number of animals that we have. Yeah. And we have to uh, spay the females and neuter the males, That's right? Correct. It has to be both the males and the females. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You're, you're right. Some people <laughs> seem to have a, the, idea the impression that if I get a male cat or a male dog, oh, no, I, don't, I, don't I don't have, have to, to worry about it. Yeah. It takes two. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've seen a statistic that uh, if you take two cats, a male and female over a lifetime that they over could seven be years. Oh, over seven yeah. years that they could be responsible for as many as several hundred thousand other cats. Oh I, yeah, I've seen those statistics, and it is yeah. amazing because they have such a I guess a short breeding cycle, right. or mm -hmm. it's like two. Or, they gestation. can actually have two or three litters a year. In a year, yeah. right? And then within a year, those litters are ready. To, have, to reproduce right. and, and it's amazing and if you think about that then you realize how important spay and neutering is and yeah but now we're talking about just our pets the pets that we have inside we're not absolutely okay. yes yes right. your own pets your, your own pets so, mm -hmm. the, so that's the first place to start absolutely okay well uh, that's a good place for us to now take a break don't you think Greg? Yeah, I think so and we want to, sh to tell you a story about the feral cat that you mentioned whose name is Virgil so listen to the happy tale about Gina's cat Virgil hi my name is Virgil I guess that I can claim senior cat status since I was born sometime in early 1988 Gina found me at an estate auction in July that year and took me home. I was afraid to trust anyone but Gina because she was so good to me. It was about five years before I would let anyone mess with me. Gina has another cat named Maya and I just love to torment her whenever I can. I love when Maya gets so excited and upset. There have been many other cats and dogs that have come into Gina's house, but that doesn't bother me because I know that my home is secure. I sleep next to Gina's head at night and make sure that she gets up when the alarm goes off. We used to play a game when Gina would make the bed. When she ran her hand under the covers, I would attack. When Gina is getting ready for the day, I like to sit on the vanity and make sure that she looks her best. As I've gotten older, the game isn't as much fun as it used to be, and I am having trouble jumping up on the vanity. My favorite activity now is to find a sunny spot in the window and just chill out. I'm approaching the age of 20, and I don't know how much longer I have to live. Thanks, Gina. My life has been so wonderful, and I am forever grateful. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that tale about Virgil. <laughs> and uh, as we were look at listening to the tale, it might have sounded like uh, Gina actually bought the cat at the <laughs> auction. But that wasn't the case, was it, Gina? No, it wasn't. He was a starving kitten that they found as they were cleaning out this house oh. in the barn. And so um, the only reason way we could catch him was because he was so weak from starvation uh, that you could actually catch him. No. And it was the, when he got his strength back, we found out how wild he was. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Well, now, Gina, in the first segment, we talked about uh, the, some of the solutions, uh, the, you know, spaying and neutering and that sort of thing. What are some uh, uh, solutions that we could use maybe for working with feral cats? For feral cats. You know, I'm not so sure there's a solution right now. Okay. okay. But some of the ways to help. Okay. okay. All right. And, and, and TNR is trap, neuter, and return. Okay. okay. It means you trap these cats you neuter them, you return them to where they've been living. Now you don't just release them, when you release them, someone has to take responsibility for feeding them and providing hopefully basic veterinary mm -hmm. care. Okay. okay, and the reason you do this is because there's very few other options. First of all, there's 
very socialized animals dying in shelters every day because there's no one there to take them. Right. When these shelters get feral cats, they know that the chances of them being adopted are very slim, even right. if they would release them, because they are so unsocial. You, you know, there, there is some liability to shelters releasing them what they consider a wild animal. Right. So most of the time, these feral cats are going to be euthanized immediately when they're right. brought to a shelter. And, and, and in fact, there's uh, been, you know, entity-wide uh, euthanasia of these animals, you know, as far as poisoning, mm -hmm. anything to get, to get rid of them, shooting. They've been shot mm -hmm. before. Cat trapping and then euthanizing. Right. So one of the solutions is this, and it's, and it's been going on now for some 20 years, but in the, I'd say the last five to 10 years, it's kind of reached some na nationwide recognition among okay. some cities and, uh, and corporate entities. Um, and and it's, a, it's not a solution, but it is an alternative because even though these cats are gonna have shortened lifespans, like we saw Virgil's, 20 years old. But he's an indoor cat. He's right? an indoor cat and he's been, you know, cared for daily. These cats are not going to have that quality of life. I've heard but they, it is a life. I've heard it most three to five years if they find food and shelter. Yes, if they've at got most. someone to feed them. I've, I've heard up to maybe six years. And okay. of course there's no real documentation. Right. You know, it's only the feral uh, caretakers that do that. And usually if you're a feral caretaker, you don't have that much time on your hands to document all of this stuff. Right, you're right. so busy with your own job and you're you know, doing life. things with your own life and then in caring for these animals. But it does give them quality of life. As long as they've got their shelter, either in banded buildings or the caretaker set up some basic shelter and they're getting food and they have each other, it is a life. And mm -hmm. it's better than euthanasia because these cats, you know, uh, are healthy otherwise. Okay. Uh, and, and so it's, it's an alternative. And they can help, of course, with uh, uh, the population of rodents, rats, and things like that. They help control that sort of thing also. Oh, absolutely. In that, in that colony I have, or that very small colony, uh, I, I see that all the time. Every once in a while, you'll see either a rat, because this is in a, in a downtown area with okay. the commercial buildings, and a couple abandoned. restaurants close by. Yeah, no, they're not abandoned. Oh, they're it's not. kind of an area in the back that's fenced off okay. where they kind of, these businesses keep some you know, excess furniture and things okay, like okay. that. So uh, it's not abandoned, but they're old buildings with plenty of shelter underneath and up in the attic. And uh, and I've seen them with rats and, and things out there. Mm -hmm. So they do help in that way. But the, 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 the key is population control. You have to spay yes. and neuter them. If you don't and you're feeding them, the population yes. is gonna go out of control. Right. And then you're just adding to the problem. Yep. Like, like it already has. Yes. The um, And of course, with, with the feral cats like that, um, when when they disappear, you don't know that they're going to come back, do you? That's right. That's right. You you, you do not know, and you always wonder if you don't see them for a week. Uh, my husband and I kind of take turns doing the feeding, and he'll say, "I haven't seen Pike in a while. I wonder where he is," and mm -hmm. he'll pop back up. So uh, we've had pretty good luck with the stable colony, but they're in and out. Okay. Now you said the feeding. Now you are a caretaker to yes, a small. Okay. Tell us about your colony. It's, it's a small one, and it's in a downtown area of, of Metropolis, and I have the permission of the landowner. You have to remember that that's very important. You can't just go set up a spot. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he doesn't mind. In fact, I think uh, hopefully he likes the fact that they probably control the mice. Exactly. And, and, and any rats there, because <laughs> he, in fact, lives in an apartment in one of those buildings. Uh, and so I have a feeding station set up, and it's very basic, okay? Uh, what I did was, uh, at the time, there was another building being renovated, and there was a bunch of extra blocks. I took the blocks, had a sheet of plywood, put it on top, and I can put feed underneath to keep I, it dry. Right, from the rain. Yes, right. from the rain. And uh, the cats do have shelter there. They have these buildings that uh, they can go under. I've seen them go under, and I've seen the primary one that started this whole thing, Madonna. She is a climber. And somehow, <laughs> I don't know exactly where she goes, but she goes up the tree, uh -huh. across the limb, over the roof of the building, and into somewhere, uh -huh. the attic or somewhere. And that's mm -hmm. where she lives, and she comes down. So uh, I don't have to worry about shelter for them. You know, I've had to trap a couple and have them neutered uh, and spayed, and... Uh, she was one of them uh, okay. that we had to have done. Well, now the question comes up with that then. Um, that's the expense out of your pocket to have these uh, cats neutered? Uh, yes, it is. I've, I've done all of it myself, although there are options, I think, for other people in other areas possibly, mm -hmm. and even locally, there are some options too, other okay. than just taking the full brunt of it yourself. And so. you feed them every day? Every day. 
Now, when we are on vacation, I, I do set up a feeder, an automatic feeder, which uh -huh. you can't rely on daily because there's coons and possums, people let their dogs loose, right. the neighborhood cats. And so your feed bill would be tremendous if you kept that full every mm -hmm. time. But I do, and then I will have somebody go over, over every two or three days to make sure there is feed still there. Okay. But, uh, are there public funds possibly available to help with this kind of uh, program? Well, I think an individual's option is going to depend on the locality where they live. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. Now, in our area, we are doing when I was doing the research. I find out that we're probably pretty lucky if you live in Illinois. Okay. Now, I understand the city of Metropolis itself has a program. I'm not real familiar with that program, but I do know that you can contact the mayor's office, and there is some sort of low cost. Um, there's some, yes, some subsidizing of, of the program. And in fact, I've talked to a lady who took care of her uh, another colony, and she was having several spayed and neutered through that mm -hmm. program. Now, I haven't talked to her subsequently, but I'm under, of the understanding that everything went successfully. Also, the state of Illinois now has a, pro, uh, a program, and it is for those on, and I just discovered this during the research for the show, if you're on Social Security disability or receive food stamps, you are eligible for a voucher to get a low-cost spay or neuter for your animal. Oh, okay. And my understanding is you go to the Department of Health, which there should be one in each county, to find yes. out about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now repeat that. If I am on Social secu Security Disability de debility, or, or I'm on food stamps, yes. all right, then I go to my local department of health department yes. and ask for a low-cost spay and neuter voucher. I think voucher. they will give you an application, and I'm not sure how it works, how long it takes. Right. I, I've not done that, but uh, I would like to hear from someone or I'd like to look into it to see how that mm -hmm. works. Now, as an addition to that, okay, the law has been recently changed that says a feral cat caregiver can do the same thing. Now, the Department oh. of Health has not updated the regulations yet, so I'm not sure what the process mm -hmm. is, but there is one, one catch to one that. Coming. Okay. that your local entity, like your city or your county, has to adopt an ordinance recognizing oh, feral cats. I That's see. the one okay. bad thing about this program. They should have just made it statewide. So if you, you have to encourage your city or county to adopt an ordinance to recognize I feral see. cat givers, and then you would be eligible for this too through the state. Wonderful. Okay, so, so this low-cost spay neuter then is available whether you have a stray cat or a homeless cat or a feral cat. It's available to all cats. If you then. take care of, no, of a feral cat colony. Okay. Feral, for feral cat care, caregivers. It's not for everyone in the state. You either have to be low income, for example, on social security disability or qualify for food stamps or be a feral okay. cat caregiver. Okay. That's my understanding from but, reading the law. Well, but, um, okay. That, I got the distinction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well. well okay. The, the, this is really a lot of good information. Yes, it is. yes. However, why don't we now take a break and let's see this Madonna who is in your feral uh, colony, colony mm -hmm. that you take care of. And a story about her, so let's give a listen. My name is Madonna and I'm about five years old. I was born in the wild and somehow wound up living in a burned out building. I did not trust humans. A lady named Gina tried to help me by giving me food, but I didn't trust her either. When I am nervous, I can scratch, bite, and claw with the best of them. I guess that's my nature as a feral cat. I don't back down from anybody or anything. That is why Gina named me Madonna. Finally, Gina and Butch trapped me and took me to a vet. I was pregnant with three kittens, and since I was so wild, Gina had to turn me loose. She was able to set up a feeding station not far from her house. I didn't want to share the station with any other cats, but eventually I got so that I could tolerate them anyway. I still live in the burned out building and I'm happy there. I would never be a good pet for anyone, but I'm content to live my life as a wild cat. And since I was spayed by the vet, I don't have to worry about having kittens anymore. I still see Gina sometimes and I'm glad that she took an interest in me. I will always be wild though. What a charming story. Uh, Madonna, the wild cat who is able to survive out there, thanks to Gina. And you know, Gina, dis despite the fact that she's still wild, I know she, she has an affection for you. Oh, she does. She likes to be petted and she does come out. Oh, come she out. lets you pet her. She does let you pet her. Um, now, if she's upset or another cat comes around, you better watch out because she may take it out on you. <laughs> but yes, she is very affectionate. It Really? Mm -hmm. So yes, over she time, she has gone from 
some kind of contact with you, right? Yes, yes, as long as it's in her environment. Now, once you catch her and try to take her in for vet care, you have to be careful to, oh, yes. to catch her. You have to use uh, you know, leather okay. gloves. Right. But as far as being petted there in her feeding station, she likes that. In her environment where she feels safe. That's right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's return to our discussion about, you're talking about trap, neuter, and return in reference to feral cats now, not necessarily stray cats, right? That's correct. Uh, with stray cats, the hope is that a shelter will take them or they will be adopted. That right. you will take them in in your home or find a home for them or a shelter could find a okay. home. That You know, the risk you were talking about today is feral cats that are not really socialized. And right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. And what if as a humanitarian, you don't want to see these animals euthanized or shot or killed, you know, they have a right to survive. What can we as citizens do to help with to help this situation with the well, feral cats? I think there's several things and one is if you don't have the time, the money, or maybe the wherewithal to do your own feral cat colony, help someone that is. You okay. can be a backup feeder. You can maybe provide some feed. Uh, okay. some financial help to them. You can also to various shelters that may provide help to other feral cat caregivers. I don't know of any local shelters that, that focus on that, but there are some humane societies and humane organizations that do that. So you may want to make a donation to them. Uh, you know, lobby your local government for low cost spaying and neutering like the city of Metropolis has done. Mm -hmm. Talk to your county, talk to your city, let them know how important it is and educate your lawmakers on this. That, that, that feral cats, once they're spayed and neutered and cared for, are not a problem. It reduces the problem. You know, it does not, some people may think, oh, we feed them, they're there, the cities will think, then it's just the same problem we've had, but it's not because it reduces the population in the long mm -hmm. run. Okay. And that's uh, the critical thing is reducing yes. the population. And people are happier. Your community is happier when they know that cats are not being shot, euthanized, and, and killed. People right. do like to see animals taken care of. Uh, if you live in Illinois, demand that your local city and county adopt an ordinance pursuant to that state law. That will allow feral cat caregivers to, to do that low-cost spay or neutering. So Illinois kind of got a built-in uh, yes. structure there if right. you just act on it. Uh, and uh, lobby your local government for laws that require spaying and neutering and licensing. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. Educate your family, your neighbors, and your friends about the overpopulation. I, and, and, I, and even volunteer to, to spay or neuter their pets mm -hmm. if they can't afford it. That's one mm -hmm. issue. Just reach mm -hmm. out to others. Um, and one other thing, adopt an animal from a shelter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. I, I, it's pretty obvious, I think, Illinois is a little bit ahead of Kentucky at this point, and so that just gives us some impetus to get some things done here in Kentucky. Too. Yes, and Illinois is not the only state. When I was doing the research, it looked very similar to, I think it was Pennsylvania or Michigan, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but there's okay. some other states, and I think Illinois kind of got this basic structure from them, okay. um, and, and it is, it's a very good law, and uh, I think people are starting to recognize the feral cats problems and recognize that they are an entity that needs protecting. And, and a, a community that has some um, way to help with the feral cat colony situation is a good community. It it's, is. It benefits the community. If Even if you take away the scenario that you don't care about animals or cats. Or you don't like cats. It, you don't like cats. It helps the community because there is, even people that don't like cats say, I hate all these cats around all the time. They're, they're in my feed. They're in my garage. They're in my trash. Right. If you have a feral cat colony, the, the statistics show that they will stay in that area more than they normally right. roam around looking for food. They don't have to look for food anymore. Mm -hmm. They will stay there. They'll leave that they're more likely to leave the neighbors alone. They won't reproduce. So generally, these animals won't reproduce. Obviously, through attrition, the population's going to go down, except for the fact that there's people right. still letting, abandoning their animals right. and things like that. But it benefits the community as a whole. Yeah, and a neutered male cat, is not, they're not going to be howling at night either. That's correct, yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Now, you mentioned some uh, uh, organizations. If you'd like to get paper and pencil, we'd like to tell our viewers about these. There are two national associations. One of these is called Alley Cat Allies. It's on the web at www.alleycat.org. And they're doing a lot nationally and uh, I believe in Pennsylvania and Maryland. There's another organization called Alley Cat Rescue that works with feral cats. And their website is www dot saveacat.org. 
So there are two national organizations, the A, uh, A, R A and A C yeah A C R and Alley Cat Alla A C A and A C R. I think I got that right now. <laughs> These acronyms are terrible. They're not acronyms <laughs> are getting me. And Greg, you're going to tell us about creatures great and small here in McCracken County. Yes, this is an organization that uh, has a uh, a program where they will take cats. They cannot shelter the cats. They don't have that facilities, but they will be glad to help you with a uh, voucher. A voucher and. Uh, help you get your cat uh, or dog, animal, whatever, uh, spayed or neutered. And that's something that uh, you We're might want to talk to them of. about. Yes, you can reach them by telephone at 270-554-2616. Uh, their email address is creatures, G and S, no space in there, at hotmail.com. And uh, they're always uh, uh, willing to help and to do whatever they can to uh, help alleviate our situation. Yes, and we're real proud of them. Yes. And their website is www.helpthecreatures.com. And so this organization here in McCracken County uh, will help you with a a voucher for a, a dog or a cat. So well, that, Our time is just oh, flying just, by. Oh, it just flies by. <laughs> Gina, we would like to thank you very, very much for taking time today and, and sharing with us uh, uh, some excellent information about feral cats and what we can do to help alleviate the situation. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for your uh, this information and for what you're doing mm -hmm. for this both stray and feral cats. Yeah. So. so in closing, Darlene, well, uh, Greg. I'm Greg. I'm Darlene. And with Wicked here also <laughs> saying, give your pet a little extra love today and, and every, every day. day. Even those stray and feral cats. See you next time. Bye.